Hi, I'm Donald Tallman, Executive Director of the Colorado Railroad Museum. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of the Iron Horse News Video Magazine, which has a brand new look. Based on viewer feedback, each Iron Horse News video will feature an in-depth look at a particular aspect from our extensive collection of artifacts and archives. We'll shoot it in documentary style that'll include interviews, images, and videos. I hope you will enjoy this new format. The first feature will showcase Denver and Rio Grande Western narrow gauge locomotive number 491, recently donated to the museum by History Colorado. Locomotive 491 has a storied history, which you'll hear about momentarily. So let's get rolling. Now our volunteers are able to work on this locomotive and bring it to a much higher level of preservation. It was stored serviceable in 1963 and is in actually remarkably good condition. Um, I'm here today with uh, Denver and Rio Grande Western Mikado 282, number 491, built in 1928 by the Denver and Rio Grande Railroad. Locomotive 491 was recently um, unanimously nominated to the Colorado State Register of Historic Places in June, and it's something that had to happen in order to receive state funding for the restoration that's being completed on the engine. That was due largely through a cooperative effort of my department, the mechanical department, and the library. Um, Kathy McCardwell, our archivist, has been absolutely instrumental in helping us um, find many of the documents plans, blueprints, and things like that to be able to place a strong case before the State Review Board to get the 491 nominated. I'm Kathy McCardwell, I'm the librarian, and we're going to talk about uh, Locomotive 491 a little bit today. Um, the Richardson Library has a wealth of resources that we mobilize to support DNRGW Locomotive Number 491's successful nomination to the State Historic Register and pending nomination to the State Historical Fund grant program. We were able to provide folio sheets and technical drawings illustrating all the components and appliances of the locomotive as originally constructed. We found historic photos of the 491 in operation from the 1930s through the 1950s. Uh, we were also able to provide the nomination and grant reviewers with supplemental information from industrial catalogs and locomotive cyclopedias. This allowed us to demonstrate some key concepts relevant to our grant request and the proposed restoration of 491. The locomotive was actually constructed after the railroad reverse engineered an existing class of locomotives, the K36 or Baldwin 189 class. Uh, 491, as I said, was built June 16, 1928. She ran all over the Rio Grande system on the San Juan from uh, Chama, New Mexico, Alamosa, Colorado. It was based out of Alamosa, Colorado. Um, she was donated to History Colorado in 1970, where it was stored until 1985 when it was moved to the museum in 1985. Just last year in June, 491 was donated to the Colorado Railroad Museum by History Colorado, and we've begun a lot of restoration efforts to undo a lot of the damage and part stripping and things that went on all the way from when the railroad, railroad still owned it till present. But 491 was assembled at the Denver Burnham shops, and it did at that point in time utilize a Baldwin built boiler from 1902. Throughout 491 service life, four, several pieces of 491's boiler have been replaced to the point that it is now basically a Colorado built locomotive. 491 also is the only K37 in its class that has thermic siphons in the firebox. It was a steaming efficiency. Um, device that added heating surface to the firebox and increased steaming capacity. So this is the inside of the firebox of the locomotive 491 and these are the thermic siphons that make that are unique to this locomotive in this class and you see that the, board, the firebox sheets in here have are very uniform in appearance they're very new and uh, so is most of the boiler work in here. These thermic siphons also are unique, not only because they're in a K37 locomotive, but they're also unique because they're welded thermic siphons. Typically, thermic siphons were riveted construction, not welded. And those riveted thermic siphons over time would develop leaks and they would tend to work apart. But welded thermic siphons didn't have that problem and that was a later uh, technological adaptation. 
What makes this engine unique is that while it was built in 1928 with a relatively modern steam locomotive technology, its boiler was from 1902. And all of the locomotives of the class over time uh, developed problems with their boilers because of the metallurgy of the time and flaws and they underwent various repairs and so forth. What made this locomotive unique was that the Rio Grande did massive replacement of its boiler in an attempt to make a far superior machine and so ultimately she became a highly enhanced K37 class locomotive which makes her unique not only in that factor of the technology but also she's unique in the fact that her boiler was last reflued in the early 1960s shortly before she was put away from service and when she was put away she had had very little mileage and so we have an excellent example here of Rio Grande shop work with very little mileage on it. 491 is important to Colorado and really important to the entire nation because, as I said, since it was a Colorado built locomotive and that type of industry wasn't predominantly here, it's really a testament to the men that managed and worked for the Rio Grande for the, their ability to be able to reverse engineer an existing class of locomotive and be able to construct one from scratch. 491 is in excellent condition, and currently we are in evaluation stages right now trying to ascertain the uh, mechanical fitness of the locomotive. The problem that we're dealing with at the moment is from 1970 until 1985, somewhere along the line, the locomotive was stripped for its brass fittings. And so right now we've had to cast and machine and fabricate many of those fittings that went missing. It's the first locomotive I've ever worked on, and it was what I started doing when the first day I came here. And it, uh, it's not been, it's not been too bad as far as locomotives go, as far as I've heard. Uh, some locomotives can be a little cantankerous, but the 491's been pretty nice to us. Uh, you come in to the railroad museum, and you think you know a whole lot about trains, and then, and then you realize you don't really know the, the first half of it. So I've learned a whole lot of new stuff, and it's uh, been a lot of fun working on this. So I'm a Colorado School of Mines student. I'm a freshman there in mechanical engineering. And I actually picked the school, uh, well I chose to look at it rather, because it was, it was in Golden uh, when I looked it up. And uh, that, I knew that was where the railroad museum was, so I figured, hey, I'll check that place out. And it turns out to be a great engineering school, and that's what I wanted to do. And uh, that just helps me fulfill kind of some of my dreams with working on trains as well. So it's a win-win it's a situation. You look, at, you look at the rods, you look at the counterweights and the wheels and how everything fits together, and this was all designed by mechanical engineers back in the day. So it's cool to see something built so long ago that still works, is designed, you know, and works flawlessly, and it's just kind of a cool system that, you know, it just, it's just something that really excites me. This is, this is why I wanted to be a mechanical engineer, you know. Uh, diesel locomotives, they're cool, they're cool to look at, but steam locomotives, you get to see exactly how everything works. And it's just, it's just cool to see it all in motion together, and that was designed and put together by engineers. So that's why I wanted to become a mechanical engineer. I've been a volunteer here at the Railroad Museum for about uh, five years at this point and uh, my favorite part uh, is really woodworking. I, I do quite a bit of that uh, and uh, uh, in my former life I was actually a, uh, I practiced orthodontics for, for uh, 32 years so this is a bit of a change for me. The 491 as you already know has been in service for an awful long time and uh, just as uh, steel rusts, wood rots. And when, when we got the locomotive inside here, we could see what bad shape the wood was in after all the years of service. So we tore everything out uh, that was necessary and we've been in the process of rebuilding it uh, throughout this time. The, the, the cab of the 491 is completely lined with, uh, with wood. We've used, uh, we've used redwood panels, for the ceiling, the ceiling is actually fairly well intact. We had some areas that we did repair, uh, but we completely rebuilt the floor uh, for the main service area, for the fireman's deck, and for the, uh, for the engineer's deck. We've rebuilt the walls with tongue and groove pine. All the structural members are made out of very solid white oak, 
and uh, we're in the process now of rebuilding the, uh, the windows and we're going to be doing the same thing with the, uh, with the doors. And of course, as you can see here, uh, the entire side had to be sacrificed because of wear. So we're going to be uh, relining it with the, uh, with the uh, steel on the outside and then finishing it off with some more beautiful tongue and groove on the inside. One, one object that we're, we're quite proud of is this little device here, which we call a fish rack. And this has been, uh, this has been tailored, again, out of white oak. And it sets on the floor in this order here. It's removable so that the uh, fireman can get in here and sweep out ashes when it becomes necessary. We've got it cut out so that the, uh, it'll come up very nice and easily over the uh, seat that, uh, that can be, the, the cushion part can be removed. When I see this thing running out on the loop, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a cool experience. I've always wanted to see a K37 run, and then to come here and start working on it, it's been a cool experience to be a part of it, and seeing it out on the track is gonna be, is gonna be a really special experience. We're gonna preserve it so that it, it can be certainly used, and at the same time, uh, uh, people can enjoy, they come in here as they do, and just to see what these wonderful old iron horses were all about when you see the engine running and you see it come to life, it makes it all worth it in the end. 491, like any piece of equipment we have here at the museum, is very worth preserving because it illustrates, as I said before, the bygone era and demonstrates the ingenuity that people had, you know, 80 years ago. I hope you enjoyed this new format for the Iron Horse News video magazine. Please let me know what you think. You can write me at donald at crrm.org. Check our web store on the website www.coloradorailroadmuseum.org for our latest publication, Colorado Inventions and Inventors of the 19th Century by Bill Rich. Also while you're on the website, take a look at the events for the summer. Remember, the Colorado Railroad Museum is a great place to lose track of time. See you next time.